Hey guys, this is Josh Smith with the Astro Imaging Channel. Uh, tonight we are going to go through a handful of quick hit mini tutorials that we'll be releasing on the uh, website. Uh, these uh, mini tutorials are going to cover anything from image processing to hardware selection to software and everything in between. So the first tutorial that we are going to cover tonight is going to be on synthetic flats. It's a method de developed by David Alt in PixInsight, and it helps with um, uneven backgrounds or background aberrations. Um, and that's usually uh, something that can be fixed with calibration files. And when your calibration files aren't working, this is a method that can hopefully help recover your images. Okay, so we are going to start a synthetic flats tutorial here. Um, you may have seen this on a previous show, but we're going to go a little bit more in depth on this. Um, and to do the synthetic flats, uh, first thing that you want to do is make sure that you have the screen transfer function, multi-scale medium transform, pixel math, and clone stamp icons um, up and ready to go. While this is sort of an advanced process, it's actually uh, pretty quick and pretty easy to apply to help recover your image. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you what's happening with this image and this is my image of the coma cluster and as you can see um, the field is not very flat. Uh, you can see these vertical banding issues here on both the right and left hand side. Um, they actually are only coming from the left side of the camera but because I captured data on both sides of the meridian you can see them on both sides of the image. So this was taken in really bad light pollution. So the flats uh, don't always perfectly correct and give you a flat field when you're in really bad light pollution. And on top of it, there's some really nasty gradients coming from all kinds of different directions. Um, so what we're going to do is use the synthetic flats method to both correct the vertical banding issues um, that could not calibrate out due, some due to some camera issues. And then we're also going to correct both the vignetting and vignetting, and we're also going to correct um, this really bad gradient that you see here. So, uh, you know, open your image with a, and then do a quick auto stretch with the screen transfer function so that you can see what's going on. And then the next thing that we're going to do is duplicate the image. So if you right click over here on the tab and hit duplicate, you'll get another image. And then just double click on the tab and call your new image star support. OK. OK, so now that you've renamed uh, your image star support, what we're going to do is run MMTI, Multi-Scale Median Transform. And what this is going to do is basically create an image or like a capture of only your stars. <clears throat> and it's going to get rid of the background gradients and the vertical banding, leave you with a very dark background. So we're going to run this with five layers and the residual layer. Uh, disabled and you can see that down at the bottom with the capital R. Um, so once you get this going you'll see uh, very quickly here that you're left with basically just a very dark star field and here it is for you. Okay so now that you have your star field next thing you want to do just minimize that image and let's make a, another duplicate of the original image. And so we'll go over here and duplicate that. And we're going to rename this one flat. So what we want to do is take our star image and subtract our star image from this flat. So essentially, it'll look sort of like a flat. But instead of a perfect flat, it'll look like your sky background, which is going to have these vertical bands in it. And it's also going to have the really bad gradient in it. So to do this, what we want to do is open pixel math. And the equation that we're going to put in there is very simple. It's just we're going to take the target image and we're going to subtract our star support image. And what this should do is leave you basically the field that we talked about. There are some remnant issues in here and there are a couple ways to deal with this. And we're going to go through them here just to clean up this flat image. To clean it up, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open back up our MMT, Multi-Scale Medium Transform, and this time we're going to run this with six layers. Um, and this time, all that we actually are going to want left is our residual layers. So we're going to disable all the layers but the residual layer, 
We'll run that on our image. And pretty quickly, you'll see here that all is uh, left is a very close approximation of your sky background. This got rid of some more of the stars. Um, you, know, you see a little bit of uh, pixelation here, which is going to be okay since we're going to uh, treat this flat as a flat image. Okay, so now that we've gotten to this point, we're going to go ahead and close our star support image since we won't be needing that anymore. So to clean up the little bit that is left, um, just the few remnants here, we're going to use clone stamp. And um, so we're going to open that up and I'll probably select a radius around 20 here. Okay, and let's see how this does on this. Maybe we want to go up even a little bit higher here. Twenty, thirty. Yeah, let's try even a little bit higher. We'll go up to fifty. Okay, that's pretty good. And what we want to do is actually get something that's going to be very close to what our uh, background looks like right next to these little aberrations. So try and click as close as possible, and that way we get something that's not going to create any more artifacts. May even go just a little bit higher on this radius, maybe even up to 100 um, to help kind of, there we go, smooth it out just a little bit more because we don't want to introduce any more uh, background aberrations. So you can see this is doing a pretty good job here of um, getting rid of these little aberrations. Let's uh, zoom out. Let's just make sure we hit, hit the majority of these here. And it looks like we really got pretty much most of them very quickly on this image. Okay, that looks pretty good. Yep. So the next step, now that we are done with this, is to do a little more pixel math. So the pixel math that we want to run is basically to use um, our flat that we created as a flat for the original image, just sort of exactly like you would think. So we're going to close out the MMT here, so that's no longer needed. We're going to close out the clone stamp, as that's no longer needed. And um, we're going to open pixel math back up. So this time, the equation that we want to run is to uh, basically uh, you know, apply a flat or a synthetic flat to our original image. So the equation that's going to accomplish this is your target image times the uh, mean or average of the flat and divided by the flat, just sort of exactly how you would uh, apply a real flat frame. So we'll go ahead and minimize this picture and we'll apply this pixel math and voila, look at that. So this field uh, that really was pretty demolished uh, looks much better. Uh, sometimes you might want to come in here and take a couple passes with your clone stamp so that you can see a tiny little aberration here, but uh, really it did a, a very, very good job. Increase the noise a little bit, which is going to happen um, whenever you apply calibration frames like flats, um, but it really did a great job of uh, flattening out the entire field. So if I undo the pixel math, you can see you know just what a terrible gradient and vertical banding stripes were on there. And then if I redo this, <clears throat> you can see how it just completely flattened that field out. So there um, are some caveats to this method, and really one of the main ones is that this method works best if the uh, size of your background aber aberrations or vignetting or your um, uh, gradient is really different in size um, and structure than the targets in your image. So with a galaxy cluster, this works very well because the background aberrations were massive. They went across the entire field and they were very, uh, pretty big and diffuse. Uh, this might not work quite as well on a very diffuse nebula, um, but on something like this or a picture of a galaxy, then it's going to be uh, much, much more effective. So I hope uh, this method helped you. Thanks to David Alt for uh, providing this method, and uh, thanks for watching.